Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we open up old school magic and look at all these envelopes. I've got posts from all over Europe and it's kind of funny um, because we're here in quarantine like so many places in the world right now and the only way for me really to kind of get that holiday vibe is just order cards from all over Europe. It's kind of feel like a trip through the EU with my post. So I've got France, here you see La Poste. And I also, oh, this is nice. I got a letter from Germany with a stamp. Gemeinsamen gegen Corona. So I like that. That's good, this stamp will help us, we'll win the war. And I think this is, I think from Italy. This one, Prior International. Oh, it's from Belgique. No, it's from Belgium. It's from Belgium. And this one, Carte Internationale. So this one is from Spain, I believe. And then I also have one just from the Netherlands, just from the Netherlands. And this is from uh, a friend of mine, actually. This is from Koos. And it's, it's really nice, you gotta know about Koos. Um, he has a twin brother, they both play Magic. Um, so that's, that's pretty cool. And um, I think a lot of people know them, the Kramer brothers, a lot of people know them. And the interesting thing is whenever I wanna, you know, buy something from Coase or trade with Coase, it's very difficult because whenever I do an offer, he asks less. So instead of, you know, usually when you trade, you're like, I, you know, I can give you, you know, 10 bucks for that card or I can give you five bucks or I can give these cards for you to trade. And he's always like, nah, man, that's too much. And let me give you this in return and whatever. So. Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny that way when you when you trade with Coase. As a matter of fact, let's just start with this one. And um, we'll have a look what's in here. I believe uh, this is a card from my 4th edition collection. I'm currently also trying to get my 4th my edition cards together. Always nice to see a top loader. Really appreciate that. Even even when a card is is not that expensive, I do appreciate a top loader. You know, because it's 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 not just about the value of the card. It's also like, I'm not saying this is a card that has no value, but it's also just about wanting to have the card, uh, playing with it maybe for a collection. There we go. We open this up, and we've got the card. Let's see what's the open. The opening's over here. There we go. And whoop! It is a Birds of Paradise. This actually, this card. I think like so many cards in old school is going up in value as well, but um, I just got it for my fourth edition collection. And um, you know what? I'll show you my fourth edition, uh, fourth edition binder. I almost completed it. There's just one big problem. I still need a Sylvan library and I've got, I'm really fortunate to already own uh, Legends Sylvan libraries for a long time now, so I'm really happy with that because you've probably seen the price spikes of Sylvan library, but I still need a fourth edition one for my collection. Ah, it's, it's kind of tough. I think they're just really, really too expensive at the moment. So it's, it's like this position where I feel many of us old school magic players are in right now where we're like, we think we're paying way too much for these cards, but on the other hand, you want them to maybe finish a collection, finish a deck. So you're kind of in this struggle and you also know that there's a chance that maybe the price is going up again. I mean, who knows? It's just been so crazy. Anyway, enough talk about prices. Uh, beautiful card, Birds of Paradise. Maybe a little um, nice thing to know about these, this card is that's actually, this was meant to be the art on Volcanic Island. Um, but it was felt that the emphasis of the art was too much on the bird and not enough on the actual volcanic island. So that's why they uh, recommissioned the, um, the assignment and asked for another sketch of volcanic island. And this uh, became the birds of paradise, right? So it's a little, little thing to know if you didn't know that yet. So really cool. Um, okay, now let's go to the Spanish post. Carta Nacional. I like that how they th 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 in that Spanish language. Oh, there's some info here, so I'm just gonna take it away here just to make sure that I'm not sharing any um, you know personal information of the seller. And um, what I what I like is I'm a fan of foreign black bordered cards, right? Because I think they're cheap, I think the color is nice. 
Um, well, let me just rip this off here. You know I'm doing this off camera, but I just don't want to don't want to show any you know private information of the seller. Okay, this is a very uh, blingy. Ooh, look at me! Look at me! Ah, oh, man, they're just incredibly ugly, guys. Incredibly ugly. Let's go to the contents. Let's hope that's better than the sleeve. Although I do appreciate putting a sleeve here. It does protect the card somewhat. Um, Man, life is difficult. This is so annoying. Okay, hey, finally. Ah, rip it off. Get out of here. Okay. So these are a lot of cards. And as you can see, there's not a tupler. It's just this. So um, then you can kind of estimate the, the budget, you know, the, the value of the cards themselves. And I do see a white bordered card. Let's start with that one. Okay, so we've got a scavenger folk. I think this is just to protect um, the actual uh, cards that I ordered, but I do appreciate it because it's actually quite nice. I can use this, I like that. Um, and this is also a protector card from, okay, Mirage. That's actually not too bad. It's, it's a Richard Kane Ferguson. I do like his art. And, oh, oh, there we can already see the card that I wanted. Here we go, Ashnot's Altar, we've got two of them. Actually, he used to revise Tranquility to pack the cards. It's a pretty nice condition. Well, thank you, sir, for the throw, and I appreciate that. And I think, I guess this is then, it's not Spanish, is it? Because it's a ajouté. A votre re reserve. So I believe this is actually a French dark ritual. I actually, I appreciate these throwings. They're not the new the new magic cards. If you gotta you know put some cards into uh, to protect the contents, I appreciate it when it's kind of like the older stuff. Um, and here we see Ashnot's altar, and it's in French, I believe. So nice, nice. Really cool, really happy with this. I'm actually gonna use this probably in my Koboldi deck, which is my, my holiday Kobolds deck. So that's why I got them. And these are still pretty um, affordable. So if you wanna get Ashnot's Altars with a black border and you wanna get them kind of affordable, consider consider taking the foreign editions. I know some people really don't like that. So obviously if you don't like it, don't buy it because you've gotta play with it, right? But if you're looking for kind of more of a budget option like I was, then these are definitely uh, fitting. Okay, then we've got another card from Belgium. Okay, this looks more like seriously packed. I've got high hopes, Belgium mail. Belgium people are very serious, serious people. They don't like the Dutch very much because we're very direct. But, so it's difficult for them to cope with. I know some nice Belgian players. Usually they're pretty good, they're pretty focused when they play Magic. And they've got really good beers in Belgium, by the way. Really nice. Okay, so there's a lot of cardboard here. I think this is really promising. The better a package is packed, usually the better its contents. Not always, not always, but usually. And I do like this cardboard. It really it protects, protects the cards. It does the job, you know. I appreciate it. Oh, there we go. Scissors. Okay, wow. It's like a Fort Knox package. But I think we're starting to break through at least. Okay, there's some kind of barcode on the other end. Look at this. Well protected, sir, well protected. Now we gotta open this up. So again, the scissors. Go from the sides here. Bam. Look at that. Lots of cards inside. Lots of cards. Wonder what it is. Um. Oh, get out of there, man! Life, life is not easy. <laughs> Opening these is not easy. Okay, well, whoop, gone. Go with you. Okay, so. What I got here, oh, Flying Man, yeah. There was um, a seller from Belgium who sold a playset of Flying Man on Card Market. And even though Flying Man is one of those cards, I remember owning them when Flying Man was still, what, 
two dollars or two euros, whatever. It was very cheap. And of course, now they're more expensive and it's kind of hard to then um, purchase them again because I do have an idea with this. I want to play them in a green and blue flyers deck, which I think is just really nice. And I found out I already have lots of uh, cards from the right sets, uh, but not the Flying Man. So, yeah, so then it's always kind of difficult to to order them again if you remember paying much less for them, but then I traded them away and it is what it is. This was a really like affordable place that put on Magic Card Market. So that's always really nice. You can just get four in one order. And um, just for people that don't know, it's one blue. It should actually be called Flying Men with an A instead of an E because men is kind of the plural form of men. Yeah, just to give you a little English grammar lesson here. Uh, so Flying Men, you would expect multiple men, but there's only one. Um, and it's a one one. So, you know, that kind of makes sense. So it's a summon Flying Men and it's got flying. So it's just a one one flyer for one, kind of like the, the blue script sprites. Uh, but I think if you combine, and I've actually seen that as well, a lot of kind of nice uh, blue-green flyer decks. I'm kind of looking looking forward to, yeah, maybe build that. I think it could be fun to play. So these are the Flying Man. Okay, really, really happy with these cards. A beautiful, nice playset of Arabian Nights Flying Man. Um, and then, oh yeah, Gemeinsam gegen Corona. Exactly, man. Exactly. Okay, so this is a card from Deutschland. And we're going to open it up. I like talking German. It's always nice. Empty. We got a card. I assume... Okay, the card's on the... I can feel the card. The card's on the other side. Okay, are you ready? The suspense It's killing me. Boom! Oh, wow. It's an island, a beta island. That is kind of cool. In all honesty, I'm not sure if I actually ordered this. So we'll have to have to find out where this is exactly coming from. So let me know if you've sent me this island. Um, thank you very much. I really, really appreciate it. This is um, actually the island that I've been going for lately in my Tibby Spellbook deck. It's really cool. Okay, Beta Island. Yeah, let's uh, see if we can, yeah, cautiously take it off. Yeah, it does look like an island that has been to places. Those are the kind of islands I like, you know, because I, I think, you know, Protocol Sorcerer Team is the kind of person that enjoys traveling around, you know, worldly pleasure. So I feel you got to play with islands that have also kind of been around the block as well. So there we go, a nice beta island. Wow, that's unexpected, I'm gonna put it here. And then last but not least, La Poste France. France. In, you know, in French I can say je voudrais, that means I want, and then I can just kind of point at the menu. Um, and that, this kind of helped me a lot when I was in, uh, in France or French speaking countries. Oh, this looks kind of like a cool sleeve. Oh, this is a Pokemon sleeve. <laughs> what is this called again? Uh, like the Shivan Dragon of Pokemon. Okay, okay. It's funny how that works, right? When it's magic, oh, here we can already see the cards. Uh, when it's magic, I'm really like interested in it. But then when it's another card game, like Pokemon from... I'm not just not that... I just don't like the art. I don't like the... Um, the mechanics, I just don't like it, you know? And, and for me, there's, there's when I look at a Pokemon card, I never have the feeling that, oh, I wanna have that card, which is kind of, in a way, is weird because with magic, you do, you know? Uh, ooh, okay, okay, okay. So I was talking earlier when I was talking about these bad boys, about, um, you know, building these holiday decks, right? So this is also for my holiday deck. This is a nice play set of French, Flower stones. Pierre de Gourmont, de Gouvernement, de Gouvernement. I have no idea. I have no idea. Anyway, two to cast right flower stone. It's kind of handy. It's an artifact, and what it says here, in this case in French, you can tap it, and then it makes a, makes a color of mana that your opponent can also produce with the lands that he owns. 
And this is where it gets interesting in old school, because first of all, in old school, a lot of people play with dual lands. So that means that usually you can choose two or three colors. But there's also this, this land called City of Brass, right? They can make any color of mana. And that works really, really well with uh, Felwer Stone. So if your opponent um, happens to own one City of Brass, then all of a sudden your Felwer Stone can make any color of mana. And this is just really cool and budget-friendly mana fixing. So um, if you're looking at a deck and you're like, okay, I don't have any Moxen, uh, I don't have a Black Lotus, um, then this is actually an affordable way to kind of ramp up with artifacts. Obviously, it's not as good, it's tea to cast, but because there's so many City of Brasses in old school magic, so many decks play with them, that has really helped, in my opinion at least, the Felwer Stone to be, you know, to be a strong and a very useful card. And for me, I remember the first time that I that I played it, I was a little bit hesitant. But then I noticed, whoa, this is really helping me. It's tempo, it's fixing my mana base. And I was just really happy with Felwer Stone. So if you're looking for like a budget way um, to work on your mana base and um, you don't play with Felwer Stones yet, I would really um, suggest or advise you, I guess that's the right word, advise you to get Felwer Stones. And this is a place that a French Felwer Stone, so if you don't mind owning foreign cards, but you do want to have a black border, then again, um, this is kind of a nice, affordable way to do so. They're also printed in, I believe, is it 4th edition? Um, and they're also printed in, um, they're printed in, in a few sets, I believe. Uh, of course, the Dark is the original set where they, where they came from. So there are also a few budget options. And I think the Dark Felwer Stone, I have no idea how much it is right now, but I think it should be still pretty affordable, right? Big question mark because <laughs> what the current prices like I think I think a Felwer Stone in, from the dark in my opinion should be like a buck or two bucks in my humble opinion but I'm sure that changed by now anyway I'm really happy to have four French Felwer Stones and oh yeah I was gonna get my um, my revised binder um, let me let me get everything kind of not really organized to put my Birds of Paradise in, right? So I've got it right here. Um, wow, we gotta make some space, I guess. There we go. I wonder if people already recognize the art. I recently saw uh, somebody on Instagram who managed to purchase one of these binders. They're not easy to get. I've had mine for a while. Um, here you go, you can see really up close. Maybe if I'm careful, I can show it here. So this is the binder, right? How cool is that? So this is art made by Pete Venters. I think the only art he made for a binder and the only binder with this art, right? It kind of go, goes hand in hand anyway. You know what I mean, right? And there's this Pete Venters Sarah Angel that looks kind of scary. And then you've got the magic player in the middle. You've got all these other creatures. Try to identify them. And he's holding a card in his hand. I can't really see what card that is. So if you happen to know what card he's holding, if it's one specific card, let me know. So I just wanted to kind of, I thought, hey, this is a nice excuse for me to show this binder. And uh, it is pretty risky, right? Putting putting stuff in a binder with binder dings and stuff. But I think the, the secret of it is, and if I'm mistaken, please let me know because I don't want to ruin more of my cards, is that you don't fill it up so this is kind of the max that I'm gonna, you know, put um, put these nine, how do you call them, nine pockets in the binder. I'm not gonna put more cards in this binder. This is the max. And so I've got um, I've got my fourth edition co collection right here. It's hard to see with all the glare, uh, but there's nothing I can do against that at the moment. Maybe maybe I'll make when it's complete. I'll I'll, I'll make a video. And I'm saying when it's complete, because my big problem. So here, Birds of Paradise. This is where this is where the birds is gonna go in. You know what? I'm just gonna show it with the camera. So we've got a nice birdie coming in here. Birds of Paradise. And now this whole thing is complete. Now, of course, the problem is oh, so much glare. The problem is that Sylvan Library. I need to, you know, I just need to find some kind of ragged, roughed up Sylvan Library. I don't really care much about the uh, condition. I just want to, I just enjoy collecting 
uh, these these sets, especially these reprint sets that were played when I just started playing, you know, revised for edition. Just really enjoy uh, Chronicles, those kind of sets. It's not really about the value for me, just enjoy having them complete. And here you can actually see if we go a little bit further in the binder, I believe, yeah, yeah, here is the Antiquities collection. Here we see the Antiquities. Anyway, um, I just wanted to say thank you for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks. Wow, it's already like 21 minutes. Uh, thank you for watching another mail day. I know some of you really enjoy it and uh, some of you prefer other content. It is all good, man. Don't worry about it. Um, if you want to support the channel, by the way, uh, you can do it quite easily. You can just leave uh, a like, leave a comment, and of course, subscribe if you're not a subscriber yet. And I really appreciate all those three things because it really helps the channel, um, you know, moving moving forward and also showing, um, showing uh, YouTube. That's where I'm going at showing YouTube. Um, you know, hey, this channel is really here. It's really growing. Um, you know, it's 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 something to to put up in your algori algo algorithms algorithms. Anyway, you know what I mean. Um, another thing you can do if you want to join like Timmy Talks tournaments at Timmy Talks Discord, uh, if you want to get a pin of the channel, stuff like that, um, you can join us on uh, Patreon. So you can become a patron of the channel, and that already starts for only uh, one dollar a month. So you could consider doing that. Mm, and I think, um, oh, there's an info card probably popping up right now, right? And then now it's time to go to our fantastic, amazing, wonderful and scroll with our super cool patrons and channel members. Let's go. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Ik het dus, ik het dus, zomba kazee!